Hey everyone, welcome back to Tableau Certified Data Analyst Exam Prep. I had a good number of individuals reach out to me asking for more exam related practice questions. So I'll be uploading new questions every two weeks to help those of you who may want to go through additional exercises. All right, so these questions will cover domains one through four, but if there are any specific areas you want me to go over in more detail, feel free to comment below and I'll make sure to incorporate those requests in the upcoming videos. All right, so let's get started. For question number one, we want to find out how much total profit the superstore generated since it first opened. So if you had to create a calculation to show the total sum of profit across all the rows in your data set, which two calculations would you use? And the correct answer here is C and E. So what we can do is we can use the fixed level of detail expression to get the total sum of profit, which could be written in two different ways, but it will give you the same result. The second question gives us four different functions, date parse, date part, date trunk, and date name. And it's asking us which function we need to use in order to display the month as a number. So if you are familiar with these functions, you might be stuck between two choices, date part versus date name. The correct answer here is B, because the output of the date name function will be a string, not a number. All right, so moving on to question number three. In this question, we're looking at subcategories by profit, and we have to be able to identify the color palette that is used in this view. So here we're looking at both positive and negative values, and we can see two different colors. So we know that this is a diverging color palette. If you take a closer look at the color legend on the right hand side, we can actually see that this diverging color palette has been modified. So the number of steps has been changed to four, and this is why we see four different colors in our visualization. And so the answer here is F, diverging with four steps. Question number four is asking us which option would you choose to label the chart as shown in the view. So if you take a closer look at this chart, we can actually see two labels that represent the minimum and maximum values within this table. So if we were to add our labels to represent the min and max values and then select our scope to be per pane, what we should see instead is two labels within each independent pane because we're looking at more than one dimension in the view. But because we only see two labels across our entire table, we know that our scope is set to table. So the answer here is C. For question number five, we're given a table with missing headers, and we have to be able to explain what happens to this table after we run the data interpreter. So to help you guys answer this question, let's jump into Tableau and see what happens. All right, so here's our data set, which is missing the headers, and we're looking at 190 rows before we run our data interpreter. So let's go ahead and run the data interpreter. So after running the data interpreter, we can see that we got our headers, but the number of rows has decreased from 198 to 197. For question number six, we need to be able to identify the mark type that we will use if we were creating a highlight table. If you take a closer look at this highlight table, you can see that the mark type that is being used in order to create it is a square. So the answer here is A. For question number seven, we need to specify different steps that we would take in order to allow our end users to swap a dimension in the view. So we have three answers here, B, C, and D. First, we need to create a parameter. We also need to show the parameter control and then link the parameter control to our visualization using a calculated field. All right, so let's take a look at question number eight. Let's say you want to create a set to dynamically filter top 30 products by sales. What steps do you need to take in order to create this set? So the answer here is B. You're going to click on the product name dimension in the data pane and choose create set. For question number nine, we need to specify the steps that we would take in order to display our totals as shown in the table below. Now by default, Tableau is going to display your row grain totals on the right hand side. So in order to display the totals on the left hand side, you actually have to go under analysis First, you're going to show the grand totals, and then you're going to select row grand totals to left. For question number 10, let's say you need to combine data in Tableau Prep to analyze customer sales. And you have two tables, customers and sales, which have different levels of granularity. So the question is asking, which data transformation would you choose in this particular scenario? In Tableau Prep Builder, if you need to adjust the granularity of your data, you need to use the aggregate option. So the answer here is D. All right, thank you for watching. Happy studying and please stay tuned for more bonus questions.